Hi viewers, in this video we are going to discuss saving, loans and risk management. In the previous video we have discussed personal budgeting, personal balance sheet and cash flow management. If you didn't watch it, link is in description, go and complete it. Now let's proceed with topics of this video. Savings. I am glad we are going to have this opportunity today to talk about saving money. Many of us have goals and dreams and often money is required to help us accomplish those dreams and goals. Saving money is one way that we can facilitate that. You may be thinking that you can borrow money or take a loan to achieve your dream and that's true. But it can be expensive way because it comes with interest cost. Savings can really help you out when unexpected emergencies or needs like untimely breakdown of car or it could be medical expenses and sometimes people need to dip into emergency savings for essential needs like food and shelter maybe because of reduced income or terminated from job. Savings can also give unexpected opportunities like special trip with friends or to reach your dream or goal that may suddenly come up. Savings give us the advantage of compounding returns. If you save 500 per month at 5% interest each year, that would make it to 80,000 in 10 years. We are saving 60,000 of our money and getting 20,000 profit. Let's see one more example which gives clear idea of time value of money. In first case, if you start saving 2000 per month at age 22 till age 30 that is for 9 years and leave the amount like that for another 35 years would make it to 67,83,867 rupees at age 65. In second case, if you start saving 2000 per month at age 31 till age 65 that is for 35 years at age 65 you will get 58,28,688 rupees so in first case total money saved equals to 9 times 12 that is 108 and 108 times 2000 which gives 216,000 rupees so you are putting just 216,000 rupees of your money at just 2000 per month for 9 years and you are getting 67,83,867 rupees at age 65. That's a huge return with small savings. In the second case, total money saved equals to 35 times 12 that is 420 into 2000 it gives 840,000 rupees. So you are putting 8,40,000 rupees which is 4 times the savings of first case and getting 58,28,688 which is less than the first case. So if you start late, you end up paying more and getting less. Why late? Start your financial plan today. How to start saving? Mental accounting. It is how we tend to categorize our money and put it in different accounting modes. For example, we plan budget according to our regular income, that is fixed. So we can have control of cash flow, but what do we do with the unexpected cash like bonus or prize money? When you are aware of mental accounting, you will use that extra cash for your goals. But when we are unaware, we will end up spending it. So categorize money and include saving as one of the categories. Manage the cash flow according to the budget and financial goals. Important of all, track your expenses. You can also make use of saving schemes like fixed deposits, recurring deposits, mutual funds, etc. offered by various banks and institutions. Barriers to save money High interest costs on debt More expenses compared to the income Not categorizing the cash flow and spending the cash unnecessarily and barriers will be varying from individual to individual. Now we will discuss about loans. Generally speaking, loan is specific amount of money which a lender or a bank or some kind of lending institution provides for specific purchase. 
All loan contracts aren't just loans where you can use money for everything. Some kind of loan contracts are home loan to purchase a home to live, car loan, educational loan, etc. All formal loan contracts requires you to qualify for that borrowing. Different factors like personal financial information, debts you currently have, your credit score and your credit report etc will be assessed by the lender to check your eligibility for loan. A bank or any lender who is financing your car or house will inspect that particular house or car and they evaluate the price and they get it certified with relevant experts. This is because these serve as protection if the borrower fails to pay back the money. Loan payback has two ways and we can opt any way that suits us. First one is fixed interest rate loan. Second one is variable interest rate loan. Here we will discuss fixed interest rate loan. For example, if we take 1 lakh rupees loan at 6% rate of interest annually and lender has offered to pay just 600 rupees per month which is minimum payment accepted by the lender and loan can be cleared off in 360 payments. It's easy right? Just 600 per month. But not exactly 600, 599.95 rupees. If we fail to pay the payback amount as per schedule, we have to pay the additional charges like late fee, penalty, etc. Now let's see the loan amortization schedule. Here you can see that in initial months or initial payments, most of the part is going to interest and very less is going towards the principal. This is because principal amount stays large, so interest collected can be more. Now let's see the same schedule at final payback months. So in final payments, most of the part is going towards the principal and finally loan will be cleared off completely. Now let's see how much we pay in total. It is 599.95 times 360 that is equal to 2,15,838 that's a huge amount. You paid interest of 1,15,838 rupees against 1 lakh rupees loan. Don't fall into minimum payment trap. For example, if you borrow 3 lakh rupees at 7.5% rate of interest annually and you opted to pay minimum payment that is offered by the lender, just say that minimum payment described by the lender is 3000 per month. We will end up paying for 13 years and a total of 4,70,593 rupees. Now, what if we pay 4,500 rupees per month instead of minimum payment amount which is 3000? If we pay 4,500 per month, then we will pay total of 3,86,000 rupees in 8 years. That's a lot of difference. So if you choose to pay just 1500 rupees more than minimum payment then you can save more than 90,000 rupees on the same loan contract. That's a lot of money saved. Now it's time for risk management. We cannot control every single thing that is going to happen in future. There are some natural risks that every person faces. Risks are differentiated into three broad categories. Personal risks, these are injuries, poor health, job loss, etc. Property risk, these are related to loss of asset or decline in the asset value, etc. And the last one is liability risk. It is payable damage caused to other people due to our negligence. For example, if we get into a car accident, it may cause injuries to us, which is a personal risk. Our car may get damaged, which is a property risk, and if the accident is our fault and other party has considerable loss, it is liability risk. There is another type of classification in risks, that is avoidable risk and unavoidable risk. However, we are not going to see all of them here as they are not of much importance. 
What is risk management? Identification and assessment of risks that you face and applying tools and methods to reduce or mitigate those risks. Here are various ways to reduce or mitigate risk based on the type of risk and other personal factors. We will discuss some general methods how to mitigate the risk or reduce the risk. First one is risk avoidance and risk reduction. This is by taking precautionary measures and adapting proper behavior which can directly reduce risk. For example, diversifying our investment portfolio, using seat belt, driving at or below the speed limit, not texting while driving, regular exercise and balanced diet. By following this, we can avoid the risk or we can reduce the risk which is one of the risk reduction or risk mitigation method. And the next one is risk sharing and risk transfer. The cost or the consequences associated with risk can be shared or distributed among multiple parties. Some of the examples are taking on business partners, combination of debt and equity financing, insurance contracts that cover business or personal losses. Insurance contracts are really more effective for unpredictable losses like severe auto accidents, severe health issues, etc. Self-insurance refers to savings that save to use if a risk causes a loss. Example, emergency savings. It is mostly used for predictable risks. Insurance. It refers to a case where insurer agrees to bear the costs if a risk causes a loss. The insured pays the insurer a premium for this service. Insurer. It is the insurance company which is providing the insurance service. Insured. A person or organization which pays periodically some amount to the insurance company. Premium. Amount of money which is to be paid. It may be monthly, quarterly, half yearly or annually by the insurer. And finally, the process of risk management is assessment of all the risks that an individual faces and determination of best combination of approaches to bring the overall risk to acceptable level that fits for the individual. That's all about saving loans and risk management. So think wisely before you take any financial decision related to savings, loans and risk management. These three topics are actually very huge and they take easily one hour to discuss each of them. I have been working on this video for over a month to present it short and informative. Kindly like and share this video if my efforts are worthy. In next video we are going to discuss you guess the topic and comment. I can give you a hint that it is favorite topic of most of you. Don't forget to comment your guess, share the video, like and subscribe. Have a nice day.